Guten Tag, A-Push. We have a new video today. It's the Bee's Knees by the Big Cheese himself, Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we jaw over Unit 2, Day 7. This is our last video for the unit. It'll take us to the election of 1800. But first, let's do our daily punishment. Yesterday, I accidentally swallowed some food coloring. The doctor says I'm okay, but I feel like I've died a little inside. <laughs> died a little. Your key terms for today, neutrality proclamation, the Genet Affair, impressment, Pickney Treaty, Jay's Treaty, the Farewell Address, John Adams, the XYZ Affair, the Quasi-Naval War, the Alien and Sedition Acts, the Convention of 1800, the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions. There we go. We're going to talk about Washington's foreign policy, the birth of political parties, and what, and what each party supported, who they supported. We're also going to talk about the foreign policy issues under John Adams and his quasi-naval war with France. And we'll talk about the domestic effects of John Adams' presidency. So let's talk about death. The French Revolution is going to happen in around the same time as the Constitutional Convention. The French Revolution was around 1789. At first, a lot of Americans supported the French Revolution. Uh, but over time, some of the radicals in the French Revolution will take over and they'll start executing thousands of people. They'll guillotine them to death. Some of the American leaders like Washington and Hamilton will be like, yo, the French are going freaking crazy. They kill the king, they kill the queen, they start killing everybody. It's not moderate like the American Revolution was. Thomas Jefferson is going to say a little bloodshed's not that big of a deal. Washington, at first, is going to have to make a decision. Under the alliance system between America and France, um, America was supposed to support France. At this time, France is going to go to war with like Britain and stuff. And some people like Jefferson will ignorantly call for America to go to war, even though they had no real army or navy. Hamilton was like, look, bro, we have no army and navy, and the French are going freaking insane. They just killed their king and queen. Washington's going to have to make a decision. He's going to agree with Hamilton because he's smart. He says the nation is too weak. We have to be isolated. This begins the whole idea of isolationism, and we need to avoid the war at all costs. Jefferson will soon resign as Secretary of State. He'll create a political party, the Democratic Republic Republicans, to stab Washington in the back. Hamilton already has the Federalist. We have the birth of two political parties. One of the other big things here is Edmund Genet. He was the ambassador from France to America. Ambassadors are supposed to be neutral. They're not supposed to like directly try to interfere with domestic policy. Genet was being supported by a lot of Democratic Republicans. He's going to try to create ships to be used to attack the British, uh, <laughs> which is super illegal. What's going to happen afterwards is Genet will actually write a letter and make speeches against Washington, calling Washington an idiot. This was a mistake because most Americans, even though ones that did not agree with Washington, loved George Washington. This is called the Genet Affair. Eventually, Genet will be forced out of uh, his office. He'll be called home. Genet realized that his, uh, if he went back to France, he would be executed, so he'll ask for asylum. And Washington, who's pretty low-key awesome, will allow Genet to stay in America, even though he had insulted him. At this time, the British were selling guns to the Native Americans. The British will be impressing American sailors. You need to know what impressment is. If you want to get a tattoo of some big American terms, uh, impressment, solitary neglect, those are some good terms to get tattooed. Impressment was how the British would board an American ship and they would take American sailors they would say that a lot of times these American sailors were former British sailors. Sometimes this was true. Sometimes this was not. What the American government was saying was you're basically enslaving our own citizens and forcing them to join the British Navy again. Hamilton does not want to go to war with the British. He felt that their economic development de depended on trade with Great Britain. That's Eugene Genet. Look at him He's being stupid. There's British impressment. Ugh. Let's talk about Washington's foreign policy because he will pass a couple of treaties. We have the Pickney Treaty. This is going to be made with Spain. 
it's going to accept the 31st parallel as the boundary between Spain, but it will allow the Americans to trade in New Orleans and it will open up the Mississippi River for trade. We have Jay's Treaty. This was very contentious. Jay's Treaty really provided a real big dispute between the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans. The British will evacuate their post on U.S. soil. The British will have to pay for ships they seized, but also it gave a lot of trading rights to the British. Uh, the British do not have to stop impressment. And it really, uh, the Democratic Republicans argue that basically the Americans like gave way too much to the British. So this will be a big political issue. George Washington is going to decide by 1800 not to run for a third term. Hamilton argues for him to run for a third term, and he's going to say, nah, I'm done. We need to have a functioning democracy. So uh, Hamilton is going to help write Washington's farewell address that he gives at the end of his presidency. In his farewell address, he argues two things. We need to avoid uh, permanent alliances. We need to avoid like getting involved in European wars, which America is for the most part going to keep up until like, like the 1900s. And also we need to avoid political factions, which we never follow because by this time we already have two political parties. There's the Pickney Treaty right there. And we're going to talk about the next president, who was also a Federalist, although he was no friend of Alexander Hamilton. His rotundness, that's how the British described him, John Adams. John Adams is going to beat Thomas Jefferson in the election of 1796, because uh, Washington was from 1789 to 1797. Um, so John Adams was elected in 1796, becomes president in 1797. He'll beat him in a really close election. At this time, the person that had the second most votes became the vice president. We didn't have it at this time uh, where like you ran as a ticket. That won't be till the 12th Amendment. So Thomas Jefferson, who was opposed to Adams, will be the vice president, which is not very good for unity. John Adams was tactless. He was prickly. He was an intellectual. He had no appeal to the masses, and he thought he was the only one that knew anything. <sighs> During this time, this is going on, uh, Adams will be president during the French Revolution, where France is at war with most of Western Europe. France will seize more than 300 American ships. America just wants to be able to trade with any country. America is going to send ambassadors to France to get them to stop seizing their ships. The French foreign minister, Talleyrand, who's actually a pretty genius guy, is going to refuse to even meet with the American negotiators unless they give him a bribe. What's going to happen is the American ambassadors who were uh, basically rebuffed from even like meeting with Talleyrand, they're going to send a letter back. The negotiators will send a letter back basically saying that the three negotiators, they'll use their code names X, Y, and Z. They'll describe what happened and how like they were refused to even be able to meet with the ambassador unless they did a bribe. This is going to outrage the honor of the American spirit. They're going to say things like millions of dollars for defense, but not one cent for tribute. Under Adams, he's going to create the modern Navy. He'll create the Marines. And instead of taking a bribe and giving a bribe to the French, we're going to have an unofficial naval war against the French. This is called the quasi-unofficial naval war. There's the XYZ affair. Dun, dun, dun. Look at the evil French with their three heads. Goodbye, freedom. During this time, the Federalists are going to make a mistake. They're going to use this time and the popularity of the quasi-naval war to try to persecute their political opponents. They're going to pass the alien laws, which allows them to deport dangerous foreigners, and it makes it longer for you to become a citizen. It increases the naturalization process. A lot of the immigrants coming to America were Democratic Republican supporters. Remember, the Irish that come to America hate the British. So this was meant to like come really persecute people that would be potential Democratic Republicans. The Sedition Acts is probably the bigger thing. This made it uh, illegal to speak against the government. It really violates the First Amendment. It's called the Alien and Sedition Acts. The Sedition Acts allowed you to be persecuted for going against the government. They will actually arrest some famous Democratic Republicans newspaper men and try them. Adams will be for the Alien and Sedition Act. Jefferson will be against it, obviously. Hamilton was very indecisive. 
And the Alien and Sedition Acts were bad times. They were in direct conflict with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the First Amendment. But even though the Alien and Sedition Acts were trashed and were horrible, Jefferson and Madison will do something even worse. They'll pass the Virginia and Kentucky Resolutions. They're going to be written by Thomas Jefferson, who writes the Virginia Res Resolution, and James Madison, who writes the Kentucky Resolution. What this says here is that if a state does not like a national law, they can nullify it or get rid of it. This is going to be an extreme measure of states' rights, and this is going to be one of the justification, the whole idea of nullification, that will later lead to the uh, nullification crisis in the 1830s and the Civil War. And uh, Madison, at least, will kind of regret his role in this because the whole idea of nullification makes the government kind of pointless. If a state can just nullify a law they don't like. Here's a cartoon of the Alien and Sedition Acts. Bad times. Let's talk about the end of the presidency of John Adams. Adams eventually realized that war needed to be, war must be avoided. The country was still weak. Adams looked like, it looked like at this time that uh, there would be war between America and France. They're going to put George Washington in command of the army. Washington said he would only fight if Alexander Hamilton was his uh, right-hand man. Yeah. If Alexander Hamilton was the major commander and he would be really the one in charge of the army. Adams hated Hamilton. He said he called him a uh, bastard son of a drunken Scotch trader. Uh, trader, T-R-A-D-E-R. And uh, he was afraid that Hamilton would become like a dictator. It didn't help that Hamilton made some jokes that I thought that I think are funny, but uh, <laughs> Adams and Jefferson did not like. Hamilton said that on his way to France, he would stop by Virginia and hang the traitors off to some lampposts. So Adams is going to uh, try to avoid a war. At, by this time, Napoleon was the emperor of France. They're going to sign an agreement, the American ambassadors and the French. This will annul the alliance between America and France. The U.S. will get damages paid to them from U.S. shippers, so the French will pay for some of the damages they did. This will improve relations and will stop the quasi-naval war. This will split the Federalist Party. Hamilton will not be happy about this. He thinks Adams gave too much to the French. He's going to, uh, at this time, there'll be an election, the election of 1800 between Jefferson and Adams. And Hamilton is going to actually write a huge pamphlet, basically saying how Adams is an idiot. But then at the very end of the pamphlet, he'll say, even though he's an idiot, Jefferson still wars, you should vote for Adams. <laughs> this is not a ringing endorsement. So uh, what's going to happen is the Federalist Party will not be united going into 1800. And who's going to be the new president in 1800? I don't know. Oh, oh. who's going to be the new president going to 1800? You'll have to wait till next unit to find out. But here's a, here's a hint of who the new president will be. Oh, no. Oh, this doesn't seem good. Oh, no. Oh, no, guys. All right. Until next time, guys. Starting unit three. Until next time, do 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 deuces, 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 yeah.